Okay, so lines lesson three. Ideas here, we want to learn about y-intercepts and x-intercepts. Just review that really. The distance between two points and perpendicular bisectors. Sounds like an amazing kind of dinosaur. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get started. So uh, here's a line, here's a line and a coordinate grid. This is the line y equals 2x plus 5. Uh, if you don't believe me, we can check randomly some points. So this was uh, where x is 1 and y is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's mark that on. 6, 7. So let's just check whether the point 1, 7 works in this equation. y equals 2x plus 5. 7 equals 2 lots of 1 plus 5. Well, that does work. And actually, every other point on here will work as well. So, we've already noticed here that the y-intercept is at 5. Okay, 5 is the number where this line crosses the y-axis. How is that really easy to see? Well, because we've got this line in this equation format. So, with the format y equals mx plus c, we know m is the gradient. The gradient of this line is going to be 2. And the C is the y-intercept. This line is going to cross the y-axis at 5. Here's another way of doing it, because you see what we did here with putting the point in and getting a number? Well, the y-axis is actually where x equals 0. If you're not quite sure, here's the x-axis. Here was 1, here was 2, here was 3. This is where x equals 0. So what that means is I could get an equation, for example this one, y equals 2x plus 5, I could put in x equals 0, so at the point x equals 0, I've got y equals 2 lots of 0 plus 5, and I love 0, it's great, right? 2 times 0 is 0, poof! So that means y equals 5, okay? y is going to equal 5, that's the y-intercept when x is 0. So similarly, where is the x-axis? Well, that is when y is 0. So to find out the x-axis intercept, all I've got to do in this equation, y equals 2x plus 5. If y is 0, so at y equals 0, I've got this. 0 equals 2x plus 5. Uh, and I can solve this equation. It's a little bit more fun now, actually. I can take off 5 from both sides. Minus 5 is 2x. Uh, and I can divide by 2 both sides. So what I'm going to get is minus 5 over 2 equals x. That's minus 2.5, but um, minus 5 over 2 is a far neater way of doing it. And that's here. That is where this line crosses the x-axis at minus 2.5. And, and you can see it makes sense on my sketch. Minus 5 over 2. Great. So x-intercept is at the point well, y-intercept size is at the point x equals 0, and the x-intercept is at the point y equals 0. Shove it in the line equation, solve, see what you get. Distance between two points. Let's find two points, and then we can work out a distance. Distance between these two points is 1. It's one unit. Distance between these two points is 3. It's 3 units. Distance between these two points is a bit harder. It's sort of three units up and then one unit across. Uh, oh, luckily, there was that old guy called Pythagoras, right? So if that's three and that's one, this is a right-angled triangle because going up and then across, there's always going to be a right-angled triangle. Um, and that means that I can do my Pythagoras rule. I can do short side squared plus short side squared equals the length that I care about squared. Um, so 1 plus 9 equals the length squared. So the length squared equals 10. So the length I care about is going to be the square root of 10. And I would recommend please leaving it like that, like an exact answer, unless you've got a good reason to do otherwise. So just to recap, any two points in the world, here's one, uh, I don't know, here's one, I want to find out that length there. Well, I can work out this one easily by counting. It's four across. 
and this one easily by counting its three up. So then I can use Pythagoras and go four squared plus three squared, that's gonna be 25. Uh, and that means the length I care about equals uh, the square root of 25, which in this case is five. Easy when you can see it. Harder when you can't, but you just have to imagine being able to see it. So this one here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a minus eight, two. That point there is at minus four, uh, five. So what do I want to do? It's just like finding how to go from there to there to find the gradient. Um, how do I go from there to there is I have a distance of four. I go up from four to there to there. Uh, how do I go from there to there? I go up by three. Uh, and four squared plus three squared is 25. So therefore my length that I care about is the square root of 25. Uh, notice here, interestingly, if I wanted to do it this way around and say, okay, from minus four down to minus eight, that's going to be going down by 4, and I do minus 4 squared, and then I go from 5 down to 2, which is down by 3, and square that. Well, minus 4 squared is still 16, and minus 3 squared is still 9, because minus 3 times minus 3 minus times minus makes a positive. Okay, So it doesn't matter if I do it this way round, I still get the same answer uh, as 25, and then the length is going to be root 25. So there we go. Uh, let's just check back. Y-intercept, that's when you put in x equals 0. X-intercept, put in y equals 0. Distance to two improved points. Find the change in the y-coordinates. Find the change in the x-coordinates. Square it and don't forget the brackets. Square it and don't forget the brackets. Okay, and then what you want to do is square root your answer. So that will give you the length squared, and then you want to square root your answer. So that's nothing new. Great. Fun one. Perpendicular bisector. So, perpendicular, we learnt last lesson. That is right angles to, uh, for example, the gradient of the perpendicular. Remember, gradient m times by m perpendicular equals minus 1, so we can work out the perpendicular gradient. Bisector is kind of like a di a, well, a bicycle, for example, uh, is when you have two wheels. A biped is an animal with two feet. So bi means two. Sect is like a section, is a part of a thing. So bisector is a thing that cuts in two parts, two equal parts. Okay, bisector cut in half. So let's do some examples of one of those. Okay, let's go over here. If I have two points, let's say here and here, and I've got a line between them. If I want to find the perpendicular bisector of that line, I need some line that cuts it in half and is perpendicular. So that's easy. There we go. Um, slightly harder one. Well, if I've got these two points here, I've got a gradient there of a half going up to it. Perpendicular means going at right angles, so it's kind of like this way. Okay, uh, uh, right angles. And bisector means cut in half. So how do I find this perpendicular bisector from those two points? Well, first things first, I know it's going to have gradient minus two, because that had gradient a half. Okay, let's just summarise what we said there and figure it all out. So, perpendicular. Perp means I've got the gradient and times it by the perpendicular gradient, I'm going to get me minus one. Uh, and bisector, what does bi mean? It means two, so in two parts. So I'm going to need to work out the midpoint and then I'll know where the middle is so I can cut it in half. Uh, let's do an example here with two points of coordinates. So, perpendicular bisector. Let's have point 3, 4, and the point, um, I don't know, 
five, ten. Okay, so perpendicular, I need to know the gradient so I can work out the perpendicular gradient. So the gradient from there to there, that is going to be from three up to five is a change in the x coordinate of two. Uh, the gradient from there to there, from four up to ten is a change in the y coordinate of six. So my gradient, which we're going to call m, is going to be change in y over change in x. So my gradient m is going to be 6 over 2, which is 3. This line is going upwards with a slope of 3. 1 across, 3 up. Now if m is 3, I can tell you the perpendicular gradient m perp is going to be minus 1 third. How on earth did I do that? Well, let's just check. If I did minus a third times by three, uh, I'm going to get minus three over three, which is minus one. So basically, you get your number, you flip it over to be my, to a third, and you're going to need a minus sign in one of them. So the perpendicular gradient is minus a third. Uh, and perpendicular bisector, by is the midpoint, it says here. So let's find out what is the middle of here. Well, What's the middle of 3 and 5? The answer is kind of quite obviously 4. So halfway between 3 and 5 is 4. What's halfway between 4 and 10? Well, let's just count it up. Okay, let's have a look. So if I go on this number line here, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So halfway between 4 and 10, uh, go over 1, go over 1, go over 2, go over 2, go over 3. So there, the midpoint is at 7. Now that's a bit of a faff and you might have ugly, messy, big numbers, it's hard to do. So here's a little trick. Midpoint at 4, 7. To find 7 I could do this. Get my 4, get my 10, add them and divide by 2. 4 plus 10 over 2 equals 14 over 2 which is 7. This one I could do my 3 and my 5, add them and divide by 2. 3 plus 5 is 8, divided by 2 is 4. So you see this works. Why? This is the average. Remember mean, add them up and divide by how many there are? That's all I'm doing here, guys. Yeah, I've got two numbers, 3 and 5. Add them up, you get 8. Divide by how many there were, and you get the midpoint, the average of the two numbers is 4. The average of the two numbers here, between there and there, is 7. Right, so let's finish this off. I've got the midpoint. By bisect, I can do that. I've got the perpendicular gradient. So how do I plug them together and do my perpendicular bisector? Well, basically, I need to use this equation form here. Y minus B equals M X minus A. And then check out what happens here. Well, I've got a point, the midpoint, the bisector goes through the middle. Uh, so I've got this, b equals 7, a equals 4. So I've got y minus 7 equals something, lots of x minus 4. And the gradient is here, minus a third. That is an equation of the line. I can make it prettier. Uh, let's times by 3 on both sides. And I've got 3 lots of y minus 7 equals minus 1 lots of x minus 4. Expand out brackets, 3y minus 21 is going to equal minus x plus 4, minus times plus, minus times minus gives a plus, sorry. Uh, what can I do here? Let's add 21 both sides. That looks nice. I've got 3y uh, is going to be minus x add 25. And that's fine. That's an equation of the line. Often they like them for some reason in this form, ax plus by plus c equals zero. So then I could work it out in that form. Let's chuck the x over there. So add x both sides, minus 25 both sides. And I've got x add 3y minus 25 equals zero as my equation of the perpendicular bisector of these two points up here. So. Let's have a quick review. What was the plan? Y-intercept, X-intercept, distance between points, and perpendicular bisector. Very good.